Hey, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the Python debugger. So really, I just want to make sure that you're aware that there is a debugger that's built into Python, and I want to show you how you can use it to uh, figure out what's gone wrong uh, in some buggy code. And we all make buggy code, so it's very handy to have this feature built into Python. Uh, so first, I'm going to start with some buggy code. This is a very simple, contrived example. Uh, we have... Um, I'm just going to generate uh, a list of numbers, and then we're going to print one divided by that number. And this, if we run it, is not going to work, of course. This is buggy code, after all. Uh, and it tells you here, so make sure you actually look at this here. This is the, tra uh, the trace back here. Uh, this is telling you what went wrong, and it's, it has the most uh, recent error on the bottom here, the most... Um, the, the last thing it tried to do before it failed. Uh, so it's telling you there is a zero division error. That's a very descriptive uh, name, which is telling you that you're trying to divide by zero. And you can see how this is happening here. Um, what we forgot to do here is that when this uh, range function is executed and you say range of 10, um, by default, it's going to give you the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's not going to give you 10, and it's not going to start at 1. It starts at 0. So the first thing this does is it tries to print 1 divided by 0, and that fails. So this is a very simple example, and we could just debug it just by looking at this um, error message here. But I want to go ahead and open up the debugger to show you how that works. So to start the debugger, you have a few options if you're working in a notebook. You can use the magic command which is just percent debug. Or if you've just executed um, the code and this is the first thing you type in a cell, you can just type debug, just like that. Make sure you spell it right. Make sure it's the first thing you type right after your, um, your cell has failed. Because uh, if there's any other code that you run, any other errors that you run, it's going to reset the debugger and you're not going to have access to that, that failed code. But if we, we haven't done anything uh, I haven't run anything yet, so if we go ahead and just run the debugger here, executing this cell, now we're in the debugger. And you can see we have this IPD, um, IPDB, which is your IPython debugger, uh, and it's just built right into your, your notebook here. Um, and what it's saying here is it's, it's showing you a, a listing of the code that it's trying to execute, and it's telling you that it failed on this line. That's what this, this line here is saying, this, this arrow is saying, this line of code failed. And you could ask, why did it fail? So, so, so right here, you've stopped actually as the code is executed. And you have access to all the variables as they were at the time of the failure. So you can ask what x is. And so one way to do this is you could print x. And if you run that cell, just hit enter, it'll tell you 0. So we're printing the value of x, it's 0, and then we can see why we're getting this error. If you didn't know the way that range worked, you thought it started with 1, this might uh, convince you otherwise. That's one way to do it. Um, you could also just type x, and it'll print it out. But you've got to be careful with this, because there might be some namespace conflicts with your variables. So for example, if you had a variable called p, that wouldn't work, because there's a command called p, and what p does is it prints the value of uh, an expression. Well, it evaluates the expression and prints the result. In this case, x is 0. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of commands that uh, you can run here in this debugger. We'll get to those in a bit. But I want to start with the most important command, which is q. And what q does is it quits the debugger. You can always start, restart the debugger if you haven't run, it, run any other cells if you want to continue. But, but this is very important to know, because if you don't quit the debugger, uh, you will not have the ability to run any further cells in your notebook. It'll block that. Uh, so if I just do this whole thing again, I'll just run the debugger here. You'll see there's a star here uh, in the, the input, and that's telling you that this cell is actually currently being run, and you can't run any other cells until this is finished. So again, I'll just hit Q to quit this, and we're good to go. So let's try now a slightly less trivial example. Um, this is going to use some things that you may not be familiar with, but I think you'll get the general idea. So I'm going to construct a function called myfunc, which takes two variables. And inside this function, it's going to call another function. So this will show you how you get some complexity in your problem. This is much more typical uh, for uh, the type of bugs that you may encounter. So we're going to call this other function. This is called lomscargle. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, what it does is it takes uh, input values. So usually x would be some list of times, and y would be some um, measured signal at those times. And it takes that uh, sampled signal and it converts it into a periodogram. So it gives you the, the frequency and the power at each one of those frequencies. Oh, at least if you use this auto power function here, I should say. 
Uh, and then it just returns this. So this is a very simple function. I'm going to run this cell and defines that function. And now we're going to go ahead and, and run this. So I'm going to define an array called x with a bunch of values from 0 to 100. I'm going to define a, a variable y with just a bunch of random numbers. And I'm going to call my function with x and y. And lo and behold, it doesn't work. Okay, so we get this, this error message here. I'm going to, this is a long error message. So I'm going to pop out of this for a second. And you can see the whole thing in all of its glory now. Um, so we, st again, start all the way to the bottom. This tells you the last line of code that it, it tried to execute before it failed. Um, so this was line 187 here in this function called broad underscore broadcast shape, which is in the stride tricks package. And that's not something that we wrote. I, I, I didn't write this, this function here. So you, your first gut instinct might be to say, well, there's a problem in this other thing. Well, probably not. If you're using these major packages, almost always the problem is something that you've done. Uh, so what you have to do is look back to the code that we actually wrote. So this line was um, executed and it crashed, but this, um, this broadcast shape um, function was called in an earlier part of the code, right? So this is a higher level frame where that function was called, and this was called in a higher level uh, uh, frame as well called validate inputs, and then here is the original uh, uh, no, sorry, this is not the original, this is the initial, and here is where we actually called the function here. So these are different levels in the code, these are different frames, and we crashed down here, but this is what we wrote here, and this is probably where the problem is. So what we want to do is we want to figure out, well, what are the values of x and y when this thing crashed? And so to do this, we can use our debugger. I'll pop back in here and show you how um, that works. We just type debug as we did before, and we run the debugger, and here we are now. So we again, we crashed on line 187 of this function broadcast shape, uh, and that's not the one we wrote. So we're going to use a command called up, and up will take us to a higher level frame. All right? And we can always move down if we want to go back to that lower level frame, um, but uh, we want to go up a few frames actually. Now you can type up and it'll take us back up again, uh, but for short we can just type u, and that's the shortcut to go up a frame. And I'm going to have to pop out of this again. Okay, so now you can see uh, where we are here. So uh, we're in broadcast array, so we're not in the function we wrote yet, so I'm going to keep going up, and then up, and then up one more time, and now we're finally in my function. So in my function, now we can check what the variables x and y are. We can do things like say, what is the shape? of x, and it'll tell us it's a, a thousand element array, and we can say what is the shape of y, and it'll tell us, oops, that's a hundred element array, and that's what our problem is. So originally, of course, if you looked at the um, the, the trace back, it, it tells you that there's a shape mismatch. Objects cannot be broadcast into a single shape, and we're looking at the shapes of these objects here, and we might see that, that that's where that problem is, is coming in here. So this is something that we did. So we can quit this now with Q, and then of course you can go back to the code that we wrote, and you can actually see um, where the problem is. So that's to give you some idea of uh, what you can do with uh, the debugger. Uh, it's, as you see, it's very handy. You can pop into higher levels or lower levels, different frames, and see what the values are in each one of those different frames. So maybe you did something in your call, and later down the, ro the road, uh, it wasn't um, the later code wasn't able to, to interpret it the way you thought it would be. Uh, and this will allow you to debug that. Okay, so this is just really the, the quick example into what you can do with the debugger. There's a lot more that you can do. An important thing to do is to look at the list of debugger commands. Um, so you can see all the different things. Of course, you can get help. You can go up and down, as we talked about. But there's a whole bunch of other commands that you can run. So uh, if you really get into to coding in Python, this would be an important resource for you to go to and, and learn, because we all make mistakes, and uh, we got to learn how to fix them. Uh, and if you uh, are not using a notebook, you can actually use the, the Python debugger package, uh, and you can do a lot of this uh, same work here. So that's, that'll get you started, so uh, good luck coding and enjoy.